Good night, everyone. I'm sure you might be thinking, is this guy serious? And my answer to that simply is yes. Cannabis, cannabis sativa, hemp or marijuana, can you tell the difference? I kind of explain this as if you yourself had an identical twin. You would both look the same, but genetically you would be different. Marijuana typically has about 15% THC, which is the stuff that gets you high, but hemp has about 0.1%. At this level, there is no psychoactive value, and you have to smoke a joint about the size of a telephone pole to get anything off of it. Once upon a time, there was hemp. Hemp has been used from everything from medicine, where it's been used to treat fever, dysentery, rabies, as well as a painkiller. It's been found um, in archaeological sites in Mesopotamia. It's been used for ropes. Christopher Columbus used hemp seals on his boats. And of course, Henry Ford made his first car out of hemp plastics, and it ran off hemp fuel. Today, countries from Australia to China, Canada, France, Germany, and England have either enjoyed the benefits of a hemp business or hemp industry, or are now making legis legislative changes to allow for hemp as an agricultural crop in the case of the United States. No, but seriously, Barbados, what are we waiting for? The situation right now, things are brown. We find ourselves feeling the effects of the global economic crisis, and there are no green industries around. Our traditional markets and industries are ailing, things like tourism, um, business development, international business are ailing, and we are in need of finding new ways of creating wealth. As you can see from this extract from the Central Bank report, the negative change in all of our trade sectors. Now here's the versatility and economic potential of hemp. Firstly, in agriculture. If we grow hemp, we can produce the three basic um, raw materials from hemp, being the seed, the flour, and the oil. We get the oil by pressing the seed, when we finish pressed the seed, we have what's left over, a residual meal, which can be fed directly into animal produce. Because we know in Barbados, our main agricultural lines are animals, sugar, formerly cotton, vegetables, and root vegetables. Also from the seed, we can produce what is known as hemp milk, which is similar to almond milk, but hemp products are high in protein, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, as well as essential fatty acids, which are essential for our body's normal functioning. We can also use the, the flour to make hemp pasta. Interestingly, there's also been cases in the US and Canada where you've raised animals, as well as the Netherlands, where you've raised um, cattle off of strictly hemp, and they've had impressive results doing that. Hemp also in construction, where you get the shiv or the inner core and mix it with lime. Then you can mold it around a wooden frame or other similar weight-bearing structures to produce hemp buildings. This is um, a new industry in Australia where companies are actually formed off of strictly making hemp buildings. <coughs> the big one, energy. As mentioned before, we press the seed to get oil. This oil is a direct feed start into biodiesel creation, as we have local businesses here doing that already. Also, hemp also produces the most biomass for any crop you can find, even more than corn. So when you couple that with what we plan to do with, with um, the bagasse from sugar, you can see we can produce a lot of fuel from biomass. Just consider this calculation. Um, one acre of hemp can produce probably about 1,800 gallons of oil, which is 42 barrels of oil. If you can harvest it every three months, that's 168 barrels per year. With the arable land in Barbados at 80% usage, we have 38 square kilometers unused, which is roughly 9,400 9, uh, acres. Uh, 160 barrels per acre per year, that's roughly 1.5 million barrels of oil. The international rate for oil right now is roughly $105, and you can see we can save about 166 million US dollars every year. We, put, we consume roughly 8,000. <laughs> we consume roughly 8,000 barrels of oil per day, and if we produce it every, as I prescribed, then we can produce roughly about 54 percent of our annual oil need. When you couple that with the, the bagasse, with the biomass potential, you can see that percentage will increase. Medicine companies across the world, uh, as well as universities, have now started researching the benefits of, of hemp medically. I'm sure Careful Campus Medical Faculty will love to be able to do this. And even though the plant is in prohibition, it's interesting to note that the American government actually owns the patent on all med medical benefits from cannabis. Using can um, hemp as well, we can also produce other cosmetics. I know the ladies love their cosmetics. And the essential fatty acids in hemp are excellent for your skin, so you won't have any of the issues of the normal cosmetics that are on the market now. Textiles and cordage, we used to produce CL and cotton years ago. How about producing CL and hemp now? 
Hemp, you can grow it with extremely less um, pesticides than cotton. It is 300%, you can grow 300 times, three times more hemp than cotton per acre. It is warmer, uh, it dries easier, it is more absorbent than cotton, and it's stronger than cotton. As the saying goes, you tend to wear in hemp clothes and you don't wear them out. Also interesting about hemp is that when you rotate it with other crops, it is known to reduce pests in these crops, and it also aerates the soil because of its root system, and through a process of phytomediation, remove toxins from the soil as well. This is just a brief overview of hemp as an overall industry, where you can see we harvest it, we have the seed and the stalk, then we can shell the seeds to get the, the meat or the inner core, we can grind the shells to get the protein or the flour, uh, we have the oil, the oil which we get from pressing the seed, which can be used in other processes as well. Uh, from the stalk, we can decor the stalk, which is where you take the fibrous inner core out and separate it from the fibers on the outside, which you get uh, other fibers from, which go into making fabric and textiles and things like that. Or the herd is what you mix with the, the lime to make the hempcrete. The first two columns here on your far left are extracts from the Central Bank report as well, where you see our trademark, our current markets, and the middle column is what they forecast for them to, um, to produce. On the right is what I've created, which I term the hemp market, which basically shows a parallel between what you could produce with hemp and what we already produce. So I will leave it to you to attach the appropriate forecasted figures there, as it really doesn't exist as yet. Who will benefit from this? Well, firstly, let's I have here the university as it relates to research and development, not only in the medical field, but in the best way to produce hemp and agriculture, that kind of thing. BNSI, because everything these days relies on a standard. Paradise Green, which is already doing biofuel, refineries, breweries, bakeries, who can make hemp bread, vegan bread, whatever the case is. Laboratories for testing the crop and other byproducts of it. We have agricultural feedstocks for animal producers, as well as normal, um, agriculturalists. Hemp Foods Barbados, this is the opportunity to produce a, a straight hemp products line. Uh, it is interesting to note that we can actually purchase some hemp products in Barbados already. If you go to Jen's or Nature's Discount, those products are already there. So my thing is, if you're going to allow businesses to import it, why not allow us to grow it and produce it here and have it to sell to somebody as opposed to just buying and consuming everything? As we go down the list, we see we have Earth Mother Botanicals for making soap, as well as Sativa Botanicals, Berger Paints for paints and stains, as well as pharmaceuticals. The objectives of this presentation was to hopefully start the process towards getting a legal distinction between hemp and marijuana with a view of acquiring permission to grow. Producing these raw materials, basically the hemp oil, the seeds, the protein, and the fiber production of the byproducts from those basic raw materials, and of course, the successful delivery of these products to the domestic market. And with that, I would like to say, remember, green is good. Let's end the prohibition. Thank you, and have a hempful evening. Greg Mosley-Clark. <laughs>